Got another question for the Synoptic Questions playlist, so we're up to number 15 now. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so make a start. So the systematic name for this molecule, well, essentially it's a phenol. We've got that phenol group there, and we've got a chlorine on position 4, and we've got methyl groups, two methyl groups at positions 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So its systematic name is 4 chloro 3 5 dimethyl phenol. Chlorine comes before methyl because of the alphabet rule. Next part, the number of peaks in the carbon 13 NMR spectrum. So we've got a unique environment here. They're equivalent. They're equivalent. That's unique. They're equivalent. So that's a total of five. Next part, so the functional group in the molecule is the phenol group. So we've got this hydroxyl group directly bonded to the benzene ring. So how would you test for that? Well, there's a couple of things you could say. You could say measure the pH, and it should be less than 7, because phenols are weakly acidic. But then you would need to show that it's not a carboxylic acid, because they also have a pH less than 7. So if you add sodium carbonate, you won't see any bubbles of CO2 produced. Now, there is another way you could test for the phenol group. So if you added bromine to this molecule, it would decolorize the bromine, but it would also produce a white precipitate. So moving on to the next part, we've got to write the equation, use molecular formula for the acid dissociation of this, and then we've got to calculate Ka for the weak acid. So you'll notice I've underlined the um, fact that it's a weak monobasic acid. So it's going to dissociate partially, and it's going to donate that H+. So in terms of molecular formula, the acid dissociation equation looks like that. So moving on to the calculation for Ka, obviously we're going to need the expression for Ka, so it's going to be the equilibrium concentrations of these divided by the equilibrium concentration of that. Now because it's a weak monobasic acid, if X of that dissociates, we're going to make X of that and X of that. So in other words, they will always be the same, so we can simplify this numerator term to the concentration of H plus squared all over the initial concentration of that. So if we think about the information we've got in here, the H plus concentration we can get from 10 to the minus pH. We are going to need to calculate this though. So to get that concentration, we're using the fact that we're told that 100 cm cubed of Detol contains 4.80 grams. So the moles would be mass over MR. So we've got that many moles in that 100 cm cubed. So in terms of concentration, it's the moles divided by the volume. 100 cm cubed in decimeters cubed is 0 0.1. So we've got a concentration of that. So all we need to do now is feed the numbers into the simplified Ka expression. So 10 to the minus 5.14 squared all over that concentration gives a Ka of 1.71 times 10 to the minus 10 moles per decimeters cubed. So moving on to part B now, we've got to identify the chiral center or centers in this compound here. So we're looking for a carbon with four different groups attached. Well, there's only one, and it's this one here. Now, you might be thinking that these are the same because effectively they're both CH2 groups, but because of the lack of symmetry in the ring, got this double bond closer to this CH2 group, it makes them different. So for the next part, I'll take each of the bullet points in turn. So why does this chemical meet the requirements for EZ isomerism? Well, it's got a double bond, carbon-carbon double bond, and each carbon atom of the double bond is bonded to different groups. So we've got this methyl group here, then we've got this CH2 group here. This carbon here has got hydrogen on and a CH2, so different again. Second bullet point now, so is this the E or the Z isomer? So we've got to look at the carbons of the double bond and establish the priority groups on each carbon. So if we start with the right-hand carbon, this one here, so what have we got bonded directly to this? We've got an H and a C. So obviously that's got a higher atomic number. 
So this has got priority. And then if we move on to this carbon, we've got carbons directly bonded to this carbon. So we've got to look at what's then bonded to the carbons. So we've got three hydrogens, whereas on this one, we've got two hydrogens of the CH2 group, and then we've got this carbon down here. So because that's obviously got a higher atomic number than that third, car that third hydrogen, sorry, there, this group has the priority. So you can see the priority groups are both pointing down, so on the same side of the double bond, so that's the Z isomer. So for the third bullet point, why does only one isomer exist, or why does only the Z isomer exist? Well, to create the E isomer, you'd have to twist the ring so that this group here, for example, was up there. And that would generate a lot of strain in the ring, and it means it doesn't happen. So all we get is the Z form. For the final part of the question, I'm going to look at the alkene functional group first. So this can react with bromine, chlorine, so halogens in other words, hydrogen halides, hydrogen and a nickel catalyst. So if you've gone for the hydrogenation of the double bond, you've got to specify the catalyst. You can also react it with steam, but again, you've got to mention the catalyst. So I'm just going to run through what the product would look like of all of those reactions. So obviously the product of the reaction with bromine looks like that, with chlorine looks like that, with HBr it would look like that, or you could have the bromine there and nothing there. Likewise with hydrogen chloride, you could either put the chlorine here where I have, or you could put it there and obviously nothing there. With hydrogen and nickel, remember, you've got to specify the nickel catalyst, you would get that. And if you've gone for the hydration reaction, so the reaction with steam and an acid catalyst, you could either put the OH group there, obviously there's a hydrogen gone there, or vice versa. So moving on to the final part, the other functional group in the molecule is the tertiary alcohol group. So you'd have to say tertiary. Tertiary because the carbon with the OH bonded to it is bonded to three other carbons directly. So this functional group can react with all of this. So I'll do the same as before, run through each one and show you the product. So if you've gone for NABR and H+, you've got to have both of them, you'd get that. If you've gone for sodium chloride and H+, you'd get that. Tertiary alcohols will also react with acyl chlorides, acid anhydrides, carboxylic acids, but only in the presence of an acid catalyst. And they all generate esters. And because I've gone for ethanoyl chloride, ethanoic anhydride, ethanoic acid, the ester product would be the same for those three examples. And the final thing to say is you can't react this with acidified potassium dichromate because you can't oxidize tertiary alcohols.